What's up, folks? This is Acid Roots. I've got public enemies. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. The album that came out in 1988, which is just about 30 years old. So, uh, particularly, I know the reception to Prophets of Rage was not that grand, but I actually didn't have a problem with that project. And looking back on it, uh, that the group name Pro Prophets of Rage came from a song off of this album, Nation of Millions. So I, you know, I've been interested in kind of like the more stark and uh, skeletal productions of like Cypress Hill from 1991. Uh, you know, folks, this thing's like DJ Muggs and Rick Rubin produced kind of like that uh, House of Pain and, you know, some of those folks. Damn near, I'm almost at the point in messing with Vanilla Ice, some of these guys, but, you know, I've never listened, truth be told, I've never listened to a Public Enemy album at all. So that's the thing I've attempted, I'm sure I've attempted once or twice or something like that, but I think really the the thing about the songs is just that, yeah, the the, the production on the songs was just too sparse. And in the past, I didn't really like political-themed music. So that's changed. I mean, with, you know, the Reagan years are actually pretty similar to the Trump years. And they're both just as important at, and as integral for black people. And it's something to pay attention to. We may not have, you know, you may have had like the occasional person, person who had something to say about George Bush. But really... Public Enemy was one who really did it back in the 80s. And the fact that they had an album in 87, they had an album in 88, they had an album in early 1990, which was just the, you know, that basically was George H.W. Bush leading into the tenderness of getting out of the 80s and trying to refine the sound a bit more. But a lot of that, you know, hate and tense tension and just, uh, animosity you know ice cube was particularly affected by it cypress hill was a bunch of these folks that kind of had something to say rather than just you know smoking or something like that it kind of had some extra stuff going on but it was just kind of strange now it, it you know the go almost full circle and say oh well 30 years later isn't it funny how we're dealing with the same junk so I didn't care that much, but it's still interesting to hear, you know, Chuck D is the rapper that you're going to hear the most. And he, you know, th this album was kind of a five star album or at least above a four and a half, the way a lot of folks thought back in the 80s. It was a heralded project. This one is seen as their, you know, strongest one. You know, you can also say Fear of a Black Planet or yo bum rush the show but between those three albums they had you know basically between 87 and about 92 they had some real hot tickets so yeah i mean chuck d flavor flav i've known about these guys i've read a couple source magazines and it, it talked about how you know it was the truth i mean these guys were flagship and rap back in the day but so, you know, what I personally thought of this album, I wanted to pick an album that had, you know, more than just one single to back it. I could have started with uh, Yo Bum Rush the Show, but I wanted to get into the meat of their success just because I wanted to see as to whether or not, you know, this project or this group, you know, had the hits to back their career. And I'm glad that they did. And... You guys really don't see me eating or drinking that much, so there you have it, Powerade. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what extra went on. So, yeah, this career, I mean, this album had five singles, which for the time, you know, that was, you know, of course, that was a staple. I mean, Ready to Die did not have that many singles. Not too many of Tupac's albums got that far. Even Eminem has, you know, had not really had a five single project. I guess you could count Relapse, but it really took a good while. So, 
uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna list, I'm gonna list a few of these songs so you know the ones I'm talking about, so, Bring the Noise is the first one, and this kind of reminds me, some of these have, like, a rock feel to them, which I'm kind of glad for, my rock radio station in my town doesn't have a problem with playing Insane in the Brain by Cypress Hill, a couple of these folks, Everlast, you know, I think even House of Pain, some of these guys, they will play. So I'm glad I would like to hear Public Enemy pop up on this station, but I think the first couple songs you hear, Bring the Noise and Don't Believe the Hype, could probably do that. And Don't Believe the Hype sounds just like something Prophets of Rage of 2017 would do. That one feels like it could be on rock radio. It has the same feel. You just need be real on the song. You never know that it was from 30 years ago. And both of these, you know, they're, they're pretty, uh, yeah, like I said, how they have kind of a, a light rock feel. It just is sparse and not, it, it, don't expect anything Dr. Dre or any producer past 1995 or so, but... I'm actually, you know, as I simplify my ear for production, I've realized that, you know, rock rap and, uh, you know, just lazier styles of production seem to be really effective. I, yeah, I, I have appreciation for Cypress Hill and uh, Prophets of Rage right now, so that definitely helped. You know, start for folks who, you know, might be growing up in the, George Bush years, which is the late 2000s, early Obama years, that sort of stuff. Uh, it's pretty simple. You know, you just have to look for those albums to start off with. I just go for the largest song and then I work my way back. So the most popular song, according to Spotify, was Bring the Noise and Don't Believe the Hype, which those are the, you know, those pretty much are the flagship songs, but. Yeah, I just I appreciated the feel to them, which I was glad for. But really, the weakness to this album to me was the fact that it really didn't have that many album cuts. I mean, it is a classic. I think it's one of those albums that's more just because the singles were good more so than the songs that weren't. Like every song that what you would have heard on the radio is worth it, but it's kind of it's the fact. I think what carries this project is just the fact that there were five. You know. For rap, for a rap album, that does not happen very much, and that's the truth. Even today, getting to the fifth single and having four or five songs on the radio just doesn't happen. When I look in retrospect, the Metallica album that came out in late 2016, that's hitting like its fifth and sixth single, but they've been here since the early 80s, and that shows like how big you have to be to get folks who want to hear five songs from your record and be able to do it. But Public Enemy had the ability to do that in '88 with just their second album. So that you know, I'm not just because I say it doesn't have album cuts doesn't mean this album isn't good. That, I mean, it's just a complaint, but I'm, it's not going to stop me from getting this project. So a few other songs that were pretty good. I, I tried Night of the Living Bass Heads. That was like the only single I didn't appreciate. But Black Steel and the Hour of Chaos is another good one. I've noticed that some folks have, some rappers have sampled this. And if you look on the internet, you can find some people who have sampled this project and the production that you hear. Like Show Em What You Got, Jay-Z sampled that for his comeback single in 2006. And the game did one. He did one of the songs off Doctor's Advocate from this. So yeah, that would be Black Steel and the Hour of Chaos. That song's pretty good. I mean, I appreciated it. And yeah, that probably has the best beat on this project in terms of you know this one. Like I said, that isn't lazy and you know laid back and that sort of thing, mellow. But then of course, Rebel Without a Pause is. Another one that, I mean, that one kind of sounds like a House of Pain song. It kind of reminded me of Insane in the Brain. So, um, yeah, I would say that, I mean, that's the fourth song to me. I mean, the beat, that, the beat on that song, Rebel Without a Pause, gets 
tiresome. I mean, it's a five five minute song, so obviously. If, if you're one of those people who you get sick of a beat that you keep hearing over and over and it this this it it really just has like a five second loop or something like that so that one's a little easier to get sick of but it, it's i i really you know it just reminded me of some j hot june day or something where you're probably not paying attention to like oh it, it's more of like uh, phasing out music more so than focusing in that and that's a lot of the ways how I go in on music when I listen to it I'm not you know analytical I'm trying to just phase out and concentrate back when I used to smoke that was you know what I would do is I would phase out and uh, and I mean cigarettes but you know just phasing out and you know concentrating on just the weather and the feeling and you know what I was doing and making sure I was having a good time but yeah I mean between all that uh, it, it just kind of is sometimes it's phase out music but then the fact that they have strong topic matter it allows you it just works both ways not every album does that so that's kind of a good thing it this is it's a moment to allow that sort of thing so that I mean I'm glad I mean, I'm glad that it does that but you know, obviously, 30 years later, some of the stuff, I mean, it, it pertains to black people just because there are still problems like this now, but it just makes you wonder if, the, you know, if it still is going to get you angry listening about that sort of thing. It's kind of tricky, you know, I don't know, you know, how about wearing a public enemy shirt just because the logo has like a gun aimed at a cop, so it's kind of, you know, that's the thing there is... <laughs> And it makes you wonder, I mean, that's, you know, that was 2016 nonsense that went on there. In some cases, a little bit of last year, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just, it, it's a hot topic. That's the main thing about it. And, you know, Public Enemy was ripe for figuring that one out. So, but yeah, it is worth a purchase. I can see myself listening to a few of these. I mean, if I could just hear this on my local rock radio, it would probably convince me to buy this a lot quicker. But, yeah, so, yeah, that's about all I'm looking for. I just want to hear it on the radio and then chill in my backyard all spring with this sort of music. But I recommend you do the same.